Hello learners, today we're going to talk about flow diagrams, flow diagrams. Now before I start, I want to know if you guys remember what they even are. So I'm going to ask you, what are the three parts of a flow diagram? We have the input, we have the rule, and we have the output. Now let me quickly draw a flow diagram for you. It would have to look something like this. Now this is how a flow diagram would have to work, right? Um, so Here's the input side. This is the rule. And this is the output. Now the input is the number you get. The input is the number you put into the calculation. The rule is the calculation itself. And then the output is the number you get when the input is calculated using the rule. Right? For example, since our input is 5, it's going to have to go through our rule, which is plus 2. So 5 plus 2 is equal to 7. Now, flow diagram questions are not always going to be that straightforward. For example, um, we already have an output, but we need to find an input. Now, in this case, it might seem very intimidating, but it's quite easy. It just means we have to calculate in reverse. We are calculating backwards. Now, here's the thing. When you calculate backwards, the sign of the rule changes into its opposite, right? Now, what do I mean by that? So we have this idea known as inverses. And inverse means opposite. Now, the opposite of plus is minus. The opposite of minus is plus. The opposite of multiplication is division. The opposite of division, sorry, the opposite of division is multiplication. All right now since the opposite of plus is minus this means when you calculate backwards instead of saying plus 2 on the rule you are instead going to say minus 2 so 10 minus 2 will give you 8 now how can you check if your answer is correct or not well just say 8 plus 2 and that gives you 10 All right so you need to know that in a situation where you've been given the input, you just calculate purely from left to right, you use the rule exactly as it is. However, when you've been given the output and not necessarily the input, you're calculating from right to left, from right to left. And when you calculate from right to left, the sign or the signs in the rule start to change into their inverses, a.k.a. their opposites. Let's have a different question. Let's say I give you, let's say I give you the following rule divided by five. And then I give you 5 on the output side. I give you 10 on the input side. And then I also give you 50 on the input side. Now this is quite simple. 10 divided by 5 will give you 2. 50 divided by 5 will give you 10. Now we've been given the output and we want to find the input. This means we have to calculate in 
reverse. We are calculating backwards. Now, when we calculate backwards, this basically means what sign is going to change? The division sign, right? So it's going to change from division into its opposite. And from what I said earlier, what is the opposite of, di of division? The opposite of division is multiplication. So we're going to say 5 times 5. And that will give us 25. Which makes sense because 25 divided by 5 is equal to 5. Now, this the last two um, flow diagrams have been quite simple. Um, in grade 5, we're going to have to do something a little bit more complicated. Um, let's say we also have 72, um, 72. And then lastly, um, lastly, we will have the last one will be on the input rule as 20. Now, please pause the video and try to figure out how to answer this yourself. Okay. Now let's work it out together. So we have 27 plus 3, which will give us 30, divided by 3. 30 divided by 3 will give us 10. Let's go to the second one. 72 plus 3 will give us 75. 75 divided by 3 will give us 25. Now, we have an output, right? we need to find the input. This means we're going to calculate backwards. And when we calculate backwards, what happens to our signs? Our signs will turn into the opposite, right? Division will turn into multiplication. Addition will turn into subtraction, right? Correct. So this is how this will go. 20 times 3 will give us 60. 60 minus 3 minus 3 will give us 57 as our final answer. And that's basically how you calculate using flow diagrams. Flow diagrams. This is as simple as it gets. Thank you for watching the video.